It's not generally known, but the NASA Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia had a major role in, in the successful accomplishment of this very significant uh, uh, feat, engineering and scientific feat. Let, let, me, let me give you some background how we got there. July 29, 1958, President Eisenhower formed NASA, the National Antarctic and Space Administration. This is a year after Sputnik, Sputnik 1. The world was shocked, particularly the United States of America, that uh, the Soviet Union was able to do what we couldn't do. One of the first things that this new agency did is form a group called the Space Task Group. Bob Gilruth here at Langley was the head of the Space Task Group, which looked at what NASA could do with, with a human spaceflight program and actually proposed sending astronauts to the moon. And that became the foundation that, that Kennedy used in his famous speech in 1962. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. So the space program has its roots, really, and the, the seeds of the, that, that whole Apollo program were born right here at Langley. The architecture for sending humans to the moon and returning them safely was developed by Langley engineer John Hobolt. Hobolt suggested that the best way to get humans to the moon and return them safely was to use a lunar rendezvous. Instead of rendezvousing in low Earth orbit and sending a spacecraft to the moon and taking the entire spacecraft down to the surface of the moon and launching it back off the surface of the moon, they broke that up into a, a lunar excursion module which separated from the Apollo command module and went down to the surface by itself and then launched off the surface and rendezvoused in lunar orbit with the command module and brought the astronauts back to Earth. Had you done it the former way, it would have required a much larger spacecraft and probably two Saturn V launch vehicles to launch all of that mass in, into space to make that work. So Hobalt was really one of the key enablers of the Apollo architecture and the success of the program by the end of the decade, just as Kennedy had proposed. The other big contribution that we're probably lesser known for or lesser recognized outside of NASA is a lunar orbiter program. We sent five robotic spacecraft to the lunar orbit to map the surface of the moon. We mapped over 98% of the surface of the moon to help NASA decide where to send the astronauts from both a scientifically interesting perspective and also from a safe to land perspective. When Langley was given the Lunar Orbiter project, a lot of people were very surprised. In fact, Nobel Prize winner Harold C. Ure was very upset with that decision and wrote to the NASA administrator and said, why did you ever give Langley Research Center the job of the Lunar Orbiter to map out the moon for Apollo? They're nothing but a bunch of plumbers. Well. The plumbers at NASA Langley proved him wrong. So we had five spacecraft launch in a period of about 18 months, and all five of them went to the moon and worked flawlessly. 
Some of Langley's other contributions to the Apollo program was the lunar landing facility. The Langley lunar landing facility was a large structure, about 200 feet high, and because of a series of pulleys and weights, they could simulate 1-6-G, and the astronauts could practice what it would be like to land on the surface of the moon. This was when they were setting up the procedures for doing the lunar lander out here. And this is before they had the surface. This is after the surface. Most of the testing was done at night, so it looked like this. It had a three degree angle light, so you had really long shadows. If you've read Neil's biography, um, First Man, he actually is quoted in the book after he returned from the moon. They asked him what it was like to land on the moon, and he said, oh, just like Langley. Another uh, facility developed at NASA Langley to help the Apollo program was Langley's Rendezvous Docking Simulator. That was constructed in the hangar, and it gave astronauts an opportunity to practice docking to spacecraft. It was an analog simulator. It did not have any digital solid state anything. That hadn't been invented yet. Uh, that particular rig you see runs north-south on rails. That's this direction. From that turntable you see up there on that rig, there were a series of cables that attached to a Gemini capsule, which was the two-man capsule that was launched on a Titan. And they attached an Agena fixture against the north wall. There were two astronauts up there, and they learned how to do in-orbit rendezvous and docking hanging from the ceiling of this building. Langley is a research center, and our role in the agency is to provide research and development of, of technologies, not to run the big missions. So we may not get the, the spotlight you know, shown on, on us when the big missions actually fly, but I think everybody here at Langley knows that we have our fingerprints all over those missions and the enabling technology that you know, we provide. So I think that gives us the, the feel good that everybody needs, so we're okay with that from a humankind uh, impact, the landing of humans on the moon was a major step in the evolution of the human species. We are developing the technology to ensure that the human species will have a presence after the Earth disappears or is no longer habitable for life. And that's very, very important.